Good morning, evening, everybody. My name is Mike at Filmboy24, and if you're not familiar with what these are, climb on out from underneath that rock and let's dig deeper and find out together. Well, welcome back to my channel. What we have today is something that's well, a little bit different than what I usually do because I'm usually shooting a roll of film and processing it and, you know, kind of showing you what we got, talking about a camera or something. Today's a little bit different. I don't know if you saw, I don't know which corner of the screen it's in. There was a uh, sort of a paid promotion, uh, a little logo. Let me be frank with Frank. And let me be clear about something right now. I'm not being paid for this. About a month ago, a little longer maybe, I was contacted by a company and I do get contacted from time to time from different companies wanting me to do, you know, some kind of a little breakdown or a video of their product. Up until now, I've respectfully declined on all of the offers, until now. They offered to send me the scanner for free and that that's where the paid comes in. I didn't receive any actual pay money to do this video, so I'm gonna be, you know, a little more honest about it. Uh, I did do a video on the Wolverine 720p unit and the Wolverine 1020 unit or 1020p unit, which was their pro model, a couple of years ago. Um, and I had a ton of questions in the comments about those particular scanners. I'm sure I'll probably have some questions about this particular scanner, but I'm going to try to answer all of them right now in this video. And what we're going to do is we're going to take it out of the box. We're going to go over exactly what you get. We're going to move in closer and talk about the features and show exactly how to load it and how to run it. And then we're going to show a couple of different films. And then I'm going to let you decide. Now, everything is as of the date that I'm making this video, which is in September of 2022, including the pricing. I'm going to leave links to the company Digit Now, that's the company that sent me the scanner, where you can purchase this scanner. I'll leave a link to their website as well as the Amazon site where there will be an affiliate link where I get a couple dollars if you buy one through there. Digit Now does offer free shipping to a lot of different countries. Uh, if you're not sure if your country falls in that free shipping category, then you may want to contact them directly. Uh, like I said, I'll leave a link to their website. Let's dig right in. I'm going to open this box and let's find out what's in it. Now, I did get a lot of slack last time, probably rightfully so, because my coffee was so close to the scanner. You know I can't do a show without drinking a little bit of coffee. So, But, it, you know, for this particular one, I'm going to move the coffee out of the way. I'm going to move these films that we'll get to in just a minute. Here's the box. It comes packaged just like this. I will say it's very well packed in foam. We're going to open it up, and I'm going to show you exactly what you get inside. Now, I did have this open earlier. I did scan a couple of films with it. We'll see those in a minute. Pop off the foam on top. And within the foam, you can see you have two reel adapters. You can push them through from the bottom. I'll show you those in just a second. And there's also a take-up reel. We'll get that out in just a second. The scanner. Here it is. Let me take these accessories out real quick. We're going to set the box aside. And here's what we got. Like I said earlier, you will get two reel adapters. You'll get a take-up reel. I think this is a 5-inch, which is 200 feet of film. And you get your little keep safe foam pieces there. It comes with your 12-volt AC adapter. Put that over here. You also get a USB cable and an audio out cable. You get, I don't have to take it out of the bag, it's just a soft cloth, a little, microfib bleh, a little microfiber soft cleaning cloth. You will also get a handy dandy whoo, blower brush. And last but not least, sort of a generic, there's no label on the front, but a 32 gigabyte SD card. It does come with a manual right here. So let me move all of this stuff out of the way and we'll pull the scanner out. This is the scanning unit. Now, 
I'm gonna give you the basic overview of it here really quick, and then we're gonna zoom in and we're gonna show you exactly how it works and the menu and the, the loading and all that. So this is the unit. It does sound like metal on top. It's very, very, very similar to the Wolverine Pro, Movie Maker Pro unit. Um, I have the, the Pro unit. I also have the Wolverine 720p unit. Quick disclaimer, I don't use these types of scanners anymore. I use the retro scan from movie stuff, but these are absolutely great little alternatives for people that have a few home movies that they're thinking about transferring. So like I say earlier, this is very similar to the Wolverine Pro unit. I think they may just be copies and this is the generic version. Uh, that's marketed to several different companies and this company in particular was nice enough to send me one So I'm going to show you what it does. This is the feed spool side Simply open it up over here and it's got good tension on it Ugh. And this arm is solid metal This is your take-up reel Snap it onto this side now the take-up reel is an eight millimeter spindle here 8mm and Super 8 spindles are different. The Super 8 center hole here is a lot bigger than the regular 8. I'm not sure if you can see that difference right there. So that's where your adapters come into play. If you're using Super 8 or 8mm, both of these spindles on the machine are set up for regular 8. But if you're using a Super 8 reel, you just pop one of the adapters on there, either side. They give you two so that you can use Super 8 on either side. Either side, either side. Okay, so this scanner scans at about two frames per second. That's not the final output, that's not the frames per second that you're gonna watch. It is actually how long it takes for this scanner to scan a roll of film. Every second, you're gonna scan about two frames of film. So with that, it takes about a half an hour, give or take, you know, a smidge, to fully scan one 50-foot roll of film. Now, this scanner will scan Super 8 and 8mm film only, not 16mm. I get a lot of people talking about, we wish they made a scanner for 16. Yeah, I do too, but they don't. It only scans silent film, so if you're interested in doing sound film, you'll have to sort of look elsewhere or contact me. The final output is 20 frames per second. Now, it is a 1080p unit, 20 frames per second. These rolls, Super 8 was typically shot at 18 frames per second, sometimes 24, but more popularly 18 frames per second because most of what you're gonna end up scanning is, you know, your mom or dad's old movie films or grandma, grandpa's old movie films. So if they shot Super 8 back in the 60s and 70s, more than likely it was 18 frames per second. If they happened to have shot eight millimeter, then it was probably 16 frames per second. Could have been 18, could have been a, a, any frame rate, but more than likely, it's gonna be 16. Now again, your final output will be 20 frames per second. So you're gonna to have to either A, live with it and, and see sort of the fast motion a little bit, or B, just change the frame rate in your editing software, which is what I did and you'll see in just a second. Okay, so with that, let's zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna show you all the control panel, you know, the menu and all that. We're gonna turn it around, take a quick peek at the back. We're gonna load it, we're gonna run it, and then we'll be right back and we'll show you what we get. All right, here we are at the back of the unit and you see your four ports here. This is your USB port. That is simply to export your finished file on your, on your SD card if you would like. You gotta keep the SD card in there. Go from here to your computer and you can export that way or just pop the SD card out and put it in your computer. This is your TV out. That was that plug I showed you earlier, this plug here. Plug it in here. This side goes into your RCA video of your TV and you set it on the right input on your TV and you can watch what's being captured. Instead of on the little screen here, you can see it on your TV. This is where your SD card goes in. Now I will say this, 32 gigabyte is the maximum size card you can use in these machines. And they do recommend that you use class six and up. I'm not even positive you can get much lower than that anymore. So what you do, and the machine won't even, there's no, you can't do anything without the SD card being in. You just pop it in, it's on a little spring in there and you'll know when it's in. SD card is in, this is your DC 12 volt power inlet. And then we will flip the machine over. Okay, we got the machine turned around and I have the camera focused in on your little screen here and your controls. This is where everything is essentially done from. 
What we have here is the power button, your menu or mode button, your left, your right, and your OK or start and stop. We want to start by turning the machine on. Just tap it one time here. You'll get a little pop-up here on your screen. Boom. We're on count This is your little counter here at the bottom. I know it's a little bright. Let me see if I can move one of these lights just for this sector. Okay, what we have here is your counter on the bottom. Every time the machine starts a scan, bloop, 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 this counter is going to go up by one. Your menu button here is where you want to start because this gives you all of your different options. Click menu. Now you have record, which is when your film is set and you're ready to go, you'll use record. Now it does say left and right. The Wolverine units say up and down. That's probably what this should have said, but left and right will do. We know that right is going to take us down. You have your playback, so if you want to watch your finished file that's on your SD card, you would go there. Rewind, where you switch the two reels. We'll do that in just a second. You have your exposure, where you can go up and down on your exposure a little bit. We'll go into that. You can see you can go up uh, plus, five, plus 0.5 or minus 0.5. Typically, it's probably best if you just leave it there in the center. Uh, you hit OK. We have the sharpness. You have low, medium, and high. Really doesn't do a whole lot except make the film worse when you go too high. Leave it on medium usually. If you, you go to low, it'll kind of soften the image a little bit. Uh, I think the image is probably soft enough. Then you have your USB. That's if you want to go from USB to computer in order to upload your footage from your USB card. So next we have the frame adjust, and this is where a lot of people will probably use to overscan or do a full scan. We'll get into that in just a second when we load a film. You have your language. You can go English or Japanese. We want English. Format, that's for formatting the USB card. Default setting, that is everything that you adjust, like your exposure and whatnot, go back to the default, set them all back to medium, yes or no, but we're not changing anything, so we're good. Film type, this is your positive film or your negative film. Um, we'll show you at the end exactly when we show you the results, exactly what you get out of those. Movie positive is what you're going to use most of the time. The, the film that was shot back in the 60s and 70s, most all of it is going to be positive. Movie negative is just that. If you are got a negative film, kind of like you do your 35 millimeter negatives, that's what your 8 and Super 8 film would look like. We don't get much of that these days. And lastly, you just have version. That's the software version. You go back, and then that's it. You're back to record. So let's back this camera up a little bit. I'm going to show you how to load a film, and we'll get it rolling. All right, we got the camera backed up. We have our film ready. This is a uh, film that's uh, from the 70s, a family that went to Tahiti. Same film I used when I did my Wolverine video a couple years ago. What we want to do is we want to put an adapter inside the reel because if we don't, you can see that's regular 8, that's Super 8. So we take an adapter and we snap it in the back of the reel. Snap it in like so. Then we just pop that reel right onto the here, like so. And then what I like to do is just go ahead and go all the way across. And get it started, just like that. Now I have some leader on the front of this film that I put on here. And it's a good idea to put a little leader on there if you don't have some on there. It's not imperative, you just may lose a little bit of the front of your film. Now, I know there's been a lot of discussion about splices in these machines. I've never had a splice problem with it going through the gate area here. Where I have the issue is the splice traveling through these rollers. Now, these aren't real rollers. These are just pins. They're just little plastic pins. They don't spin or anything, so the film just sort of rubs across them. So what you do is once you have this threaded up like that, this is your gate. And what you do is you slide, whoop, you slide to the left. And that pops your pressure plate open. You want to take a little blowy brush here and sort of brush out any dust you might have in there. Like so. And then we take our film and we roll it down. Now when you're loading film to scan, you follow the solid lines. See the solid line? When you're rewinding, you'll follow the dotted line, which basically just goes from one to the other. So you go under this first peg here 
Now this part is a little bit tricky only because there's three little sort of little lips that you got to get this film under. You start with the one in the back and I'll even zoom in a little bit so you can see this easier. You push into the back there. Then you want to twist the front, get it under that one, twist the other side a little bit and get it under that one and you're set to go. Now I do see a little bit of hair in there. I want to get, make sure you get everything out of there. And then there's a little advanced claw inside here that you want to make, kind of make sure one of your perfs is touching and you can feel it in there. You can go back and forth a little bit and when you're there, Whoop, snap that closed and you're good to go. Then you want to take this, give yourself a little slack, and you want to come around and just follow the pattern there, just like that. Now you're loaded, it's ready to go. Now just like we talked about earlier, record is what's going to start your record. So let's get this lined up. We're going to hit record. And it's going to give you one warning menu, basically. Make sure you have 8mm or Super 8 selected. And we do have Super 8. This is your 8mm and Super 8 selector switch here. To the right is Super 8. To the left is 8mm. And you can see it actually moves this whole mechanism a little bit. Just enough. So we'll keep that on Super 8. And the last push should start you. And now we are officially scanning to the SD card. Now, if you watch here, this is the only place where my splice sometimes hangs up. You can see the splice going through these pins. And I use tape splices. And I didn't have any issue with it at all that time. So that's good. So you can see, I, I'm doing a bit of a, sort of an over scan so you can see the perforation here. A little bit of the perforation. It does overscan a little. It won't do an extreme overscan like some of the professional scanners will, but you can see the top of the next frame and the bottom of the previous frame if you look closely. Now let me get push in a little close so you can see it. There, you should be able to see that now. You can see your framing. Now if you're not happy with that framing or you want to zoom in on the picture a little bit, that's where you go to your frame adjust. So we'll stop the machine. And you can see it added one to the counter. Now we go to menu and we'll go down to frame adjust. Right here, you hit OK. It'll start and it'll give you a frame. And you can see the bottom and top of the frame. Now your X axis is left and right. So you could go left and you could see the, the sprocket hole or the perf there, but you're going to cut off a lot of your right hand side because you can't really zoom in too much more than we are right now. I'm sorry, or zoom out rather. So to get your actual whole frame, you've got to leave it somewhere in that range. You hit OK, then it jumps down to your X axis, which is your up and down. So if you can see the bottom of the frame moving, and you see the top coming down, you want to get it somewhere centered. Hit OK, and then, boom, we're down to your W, which is your zooming in and out. See, we're zoomed all the way out because it's on zero. You go left, and you can see it's zooming in. So if you want to cut off that perf, and you want to sort of crop in tighter, then that's the way to do it. You hit Menu, and you're back to where you started again with it reframed. Now, each time, if I were to shut this machine off and pick it back up a week from now, these settings would stay intact. It, it always remembers your last setting. So we hit OK and OK, and it's going to start scanning again with the new settings that you gave it. Now, you can't focus this camera. It is fixed focus. So what you see is basically what you get. You can't really adjust the colors. All that has to be done in post. So we will stop it. Now I'm going to back the camera up again and I'm going to show you how to rewind it. Okay, so now that we're finished scanning our film, we've stopped the scanner. Let's turn it off. You hit the power button one time, shuts it right off. Now you probably should be doing this when the film has completely been scanned and it's off of this reel over here, but for our demo purposes, it's okay. You want to slide this open here. We get to our film. Let's pop it out of here. Let's take it out of these pins. Now you got to be a little careful here because it's under these three little catches here. 
pop it out, close this back down. And then we got to take these and we have to reverse these two reels. So in order to do that, we have to take this adapter off of here and we're going to have to put it on the other side or leave it in the reel, but it has to be on the other side of the reel. So we'll put it back in. So it was back here, but we have to put it on this side because we're flipping the reel. So remember, they were on just like this. Now they're going to be on basically on opposite. So they're going to be this this way. Press that in. Press that side in. And then you want to take your film and go underneath this front roller here or that front pin. We got to go back inside our menu. So you want to hit on. Yeah, start up. And we're going to go back to the menu. And we want to go to rewind here. So you go down, down, hit OK, and go. And you can see the rewind starts there. Now, a lot of people would probably just rewind this on a rewind or on a movie projector or something. So it doesn't cause, uh, you know, wear and tear on these little motors. That's fine, whatever you want to do. But it does rewind. It does as advertised. When you're done, you hit OK. We'll shut the machine off. Bye. Pop off the reel and you're back ready, good to go for another day. Now you can simply pop the, well, let's pull the power out. Back to the back of the machine. There's your SD card. Push it in, pop it out, and you're good to go. I would not recommend taking this out before you turn the power off on your machine because you can cause damage to your SD card but now you can put this in your computer and you can pull the files right off. Now, let's take it back to Mike. Well, that's how you load it up. That's how you run it. One thing I forgot to mention, it will hold reels up to nine inches in diameter. These are three inches in diameter, which is pretty much standard. This is what most people will see. This is what most grandparents have laying around. This is a seven inch reel. <laughs> which holds 400 feet of film. That's equivalent to eight of these that they just splice together usually and put it on a big 400 foot roll. Now, a nine inch reel would be 600 feet of film. So that's four more of these. So that would be 12 of these reels in one. Now, I don't have any 600 foot reels and most people are only gonna have these or these because this was pretty standard back in the day. Uh, but this is probably what most people are gonna see. Now, I didn't actually run this 400 foot roll through this particular scanner because this is what most people are interested in. Results, like I showed you earlier, you could do positive film or negative film. This is a positive, this is some Kodachrome from 1971, I believe. This is a negative film that I shot uh, just this year. It's 50D, uh, Vision 3 50D film. And I'm gonna show you kind of what you can expect when you do negative film, when you do negative color film. Now, I didn't do any negative black and white film. I have some, but I didn't scan it in this because really I wanted to see what it would do with the color film. Let's take a peek at the slight overscan that I did with this. You will see there is some jiggle in the uh, sprocket hole. Uh, and then I'm gonna show you how I sort of fixed it a little bit and did the best I could. So here's the original that we got out here, just a small part of it. Now I did put that footage in DaVinci Resolve. There is a little bit of a learning curve with that program, but it is free. Uh, you can stabilize the footage, you can boost the colors a little bit, you can help it a little bit, and you can also reduce the frame rate down to the proper frame rate, which I did. Here's what I got after I stabilized the footage, put it at the right frame rate, and did a little bit with the color.
I'd say that's a little bit of an improvement. Now let's show you what happens when you scan your color negative. Now, color negative typically when you get it processed, it's gonna have sort of an orange or red cast over it. The scanner really only does one thing and it scans what it sees in front of it. Uh, I will say it didn't do a fantastic job scanning my color negative film. This is exactly what I got. And after working it over just a little bit in DaVinci Resolve, and I may have thrown it in uh, Magic's Vegas Pro 18, I can't remember, but this is what I ended up, this is about the best I could get for the, about the 15 minutes that I played with it. This is after I messed with it a little bit in my editing software. <laughs> About as good as I could get it for what I had to work with. The last thing I want to show you is the properties of the files that this outputs. They're very, very, I'm not, this is not a compare video, but I will say they're extremely similar to what the Wolverine Pro gave me. Let me show you a couple of screenshots of the properties dialog, and then also I'll do the media info for the nerd heads that want to know exactly what they're getting. This is the properties dialog. And this is the media info. So it gives you the breakdown of the actual media file. Well, that's what I have for you today, guys. There is a place in the market for a scanner like this. You see, you can either project your film on the wall and, and, and video it that way, or, or you can do a DIY scanner. You could pick up something like this. If you're looking for a quick fix and you want mom or dad or grandma or grandpa to see their old films, or maybe you want to see their old films and you're not really there for for broadcasting them on a wide screen, this might be for you. I don't think this is for professional work, but like I say, there's a place in the market for something like this. I'll let you be the judge. You decide if this is something that you want to put in your arsenal or not. It's also not too bad for shooting your own film, getting it processed, and if you want to see your dailies, so to speak. It might be a good little daily machine. Anyway, if you like this video, if you found it helpful in the slightest, do me a favor and just tap the like button for me. If you're interested in more videos, mainly my film that I shoot and some DIY projects and some found film where we find really, really old cartridges of film that were exposed many, many years ago. We process them, we scan them, and we show them to you. I don't know why I'm talking like a robot. Then subscribe. You might as well. It's free. It doesn't it takes like like that long. And until the very next time that you hear from me, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that's the one. <laughs> I am a nut. I will see all of you on the very next go around.